This new video is going to show us how to lay out our slide tubes. Given the handout called the slide tube layout, it's going to show us three different heights for our tubes. One for our 24 foot platform, one for our 16, and one for our 8 foot platform. We're going to start out with the 24 foot platform and we have to do a couple things before we start. Number one, on our desktop we need to select a new software program called AutoCAD 2016. Double click on the desktop to activate this software. This will bring you to a gray screen and you're going to start by going to the large icon called Start AutoCAD Drawing. Upon doing that this will bring you to a screen similar to the one I'm drawing on at the moment. After your screen is presented F7 key will control the grid on or off. F8, which I'd like you also to press, will allow you to snap in an ortho plane. It'll go 60, 90, 30 degrees. Also in the upper left, where my cursor is, I'd like you to go from top view and I'd like you to switch that to southeast. Down at the bottom of your screen, you now have a command prompt center. I'd like you to type in units. Upon typing in units, we will click on that, and that brings up this drawing scheme. We're going to switch decimals now to architecture and precision to zero feet, zero inches. And also down at the bottom, we can keep this in inches also and where it has international we can change that to American and then pick OK. As you can see I'm now ready to start my drawing but now actually we're going to work in feet and inches so everything I put in feet we have to put the small mark in one mark for inch feet and two marks for inches. So we're going to start out looking at your sketch I'm going to start with the 24 foot platform. We're going to lay out some lines and then we'll be using three commands. The line command, the spline command, the circle command. And then we will sweep these with the sweep command, the fourth one. So going to the line command, I will start on my screen and I'm going to have ortho on, which is F8, which will snap me in a vertical plane. I'm going to type in 26 and the foot mark, 6 inches. Hit enter. And as you can see, it's rather high or tall. So over on the right side, if we come up and we zoom extents, we can now change that to zoom out. And we should be able to control that. with a zoom all command. And by doing that we should now be able to bring it into range with our key. Now anytime you want to move that line you just click on it, hold it down, and we can move it to a point where you can see the drawing. So our first line was 20 foot 6, 26 feet 6 inches. Our next line is going to be coming down at a distance of 8 feet, keeping ortho on so it snaps it in that work plane. Then I'm going to go to the right, 12 feet, coming back to the right, 10 feet, then coming back the other direction, 12 feet, then the last leg will be 10 feet. As you can see, I sort of created a pattern. Now at each one of these intersections, I'm going to draw a vertical line. Now this line will have a certain height. This second vertical line will be 18 feet. My next line will go up a distance of 14 feet, as shown on your diagram. The next one We'll go up a height of 12 feet. The next one will go up a height of 8 feet. And the 
remaining or last endpoint of our line will be four feet. Now we have our height for our 24 foot. The next step is to draw one more line at the top coming off our tallest line at four feet. Now having this done, I want to put two circles at the top. So I'm going to go to my circle drop down menu, go to diameter, go to this starting end point at the top of our line, and I'm going to put in 24 inches. Shift key inches. And I'm going to also put in at that point circle diameter a 23 inch diameter. Now take notice it looks like my circles are laying down. So I'm going to go down to my command prompt and I'm going to type in row RO just RO and stop for a moment. This brings up some drop down menus. We're looking for rotate 3D. So I'm going to select it, come over, select both my circles, hit enter once, Grab the center as my first axis, and as you can see, I'm going up this direction. This will be my second axis outside the circle anywhere. Click again, and now it wants to know the degrees, and I'm going to type in 90, which will rotate it off that axis. Now I'm going to use a new command, underline. I'm going to use something called a spline. Now the spline is actually part of our drawing assembly. So if we go to our drop down menu, we're looking for spline. Now there's a couple different splines. I'm going to go with the first one, the spline fit. So by clicking on this, I'm going to start at the top. I'm going to click my starting point. I'm going to come out to the four foot marking. Then I'm coming down to my first vertical line. Then to the next vertical line. As you can see, it sort of wraps around and serpentines down through. And my last one is my four foot line. Now upon doing that, click and then just come out slowly to the right. So you have an extension past that four foot. As you can see, come out approximately oh, three feet should work real well. Click and then hit enter. You now have a pathway for that tower. The next step will be to type in the word sweep. So at the bottom of your screen, we're going to type in sweep. And then hit enter. Now we're going to go up to the top. We're going to select both of these circles. Hit enter once. Now it wants to know the path. And the path will be our spline. And if I click, we now have a tube. Now how do I know it worked? Because I'm looking at the bottom and I see the circle did follow the spline pathway. Now up on the right you're going to see next to I Southeast Isometric the word 2D wireframe. We can change our different visuals here by clicking on wireframe and let's just go to shaded for a moment and see what happens you can now see the slide tube has changed. Now I can change the color of this by just simply clicking on it, going up to by layer, and I can give it any color that I choose. Then hit escape, and there it is. Now we're not quite finished yet. Our next step is to put supports in vertical supports at each one of these lines. Now to do this, we're going to make columns. Now to make a column, we're going to use an 8 by 8 column. So I'm going to zoom in and just simply clicking on my line command with ortho on and still in southeast ISO, I'm going to go 8 inches 
in one direction, 8 inches in another direction, back the other direction 8 inches to create that square. Now I'm going to type into the bottom of my screen, REG, enter. This will allow me to region this square. Now it becomes 1. So I'm going to go back to wireframe so I can see it. And then I'm going to draw a line from corner to corner. Now upon doing that, I'm now going to go up to my copy command. I'm going to select this square, grab it in the middle, and I'm going to place it at each vertical line at its base point. This will allow me to extrude or sweep this shape the same height. Hit escape, I can erase the extra one, delete it, and now I'm ready to go ahead and put in my tubes. To do this, I'm just going to simply type in sweep. S W E E P, enter. Select the square, hit enter, pick the path, which is the vertical, and it will follow it. If you right click, sweep again, follow it, hit enter, sweep at the path. Right click, repeat, click the square, hit enter once, pick the path. A couple more to go, sweep. Click the path, and it follows it. One, two more. Pick the square, hit enter. Pick the path. Let's try that again. Sweep, select, hit enter, pick the path. One more. Right click, sweep. Select the square, hit enter once, pick the path. Now up at the top, I'm noticing I'm going to need to move this tube because it's too close to the beginning. So up at the top, I'm going to go to my move command. I'm going to select the column and I'm going to move it from its center point to the midpoint of that four foot line and it should snap automatically. Now we're not quite finished. There's one more step. I'm going to now hit escape and I'm going to go up to wireframe but I'm going to go to hidden. This will show the tube. Now right now these columns are passing into the tube. I'm going to subtract those away with the inside 23 inch circle. So this is how it will work. At the bottom of your screen, in the command area, type in SU. That's the shortcut for subtract. Hit enter. Now we're going to zoom into the tube. We're going to pick the outside of the tube, not the inside, the outside. And we're going to go pick all the columns. Then we're going to hit enter, come back down to the bottom, and select the inside of the tube. Enter. What we've just done was hollowed out the tube and at the same time we're able to contour the columns to fit the actual slide tube. So if I go to realistic I can now look up inside the tube and there should be no interference with the columns. They're actually, as you can see, contoured to the actual shape of the tube. This concludes our video for our 24 foot slide tube. We will use the same process, a new folder in AutoCAD for each one of our slides. Once the 24 footer is complete, Start with the 16-footer following your slide tube sketch.